Mwadi shi ya ya mwakwa ba Eba sika semu huu ni mdiye Eju mediye so Eye mchia me Richard Tatamuzu Ena misaadu mwashia Ene day Ene Eju mediye no Ediye kupi Ewo Micro Credit Association of Ghana Na Eju mediye na se no Tutre ni penye A Ode Obenfo Professor Kwabna Enim Ene wamo Ekasai Na wamo mo Efutua Eba buwa wamo Ewo Eju mediye Umu diye a fin so was also chain my dream see and near ma was only go a quen moi a bad boy a ma daddy four mu no more yeah juma any on my money na a two to any bebre or more or my brabo. Yanko na yanko tieno. Data on Ghana on microfinance is non is non existent. This is a problem. It is a problem in the sense that you cannot plan any intervention if you don't have a historical perspective of how far you've gone. I tried going to Gamfin, I asked of the performance benchmarking and monitoring um, booklet that they had been publishing up until 2014, and my good friend here mentioned that for one reason or the other, as a country, we are not doing that. Again, as Yao said, 2015 was the last time that as a country, we took stock of performance of institutions and also demand side issues. Four years up until now, there's no information, there's no data available. It doesn't make my work as a keynote speaker difficult, but it tells us straight in the face that as a country we have challenges. Bank of Ghana has taken up the mandate to sanitize the sector, but the data that Bank of Ghana is striving on to sanitize the sector is only a part of what microfinance is expected to do. It's only looking at the prudential side. But for all of us who got into microfinance, we know that microfinance at the minimum is double-edged, in which case you look at the social dimension and the financial dimension. I'm putting this point up front because one of the strong recommendations I'm going to make at the end of my speech is that the sanitizing exercise should be comprehensive by looking at both the prudential and the non-prudential aspects. Looking at only the prudential aspect simply says to our face, say to our face that microfinance is losing the battle on the poverty reduction perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, as I tried looking at this exercise, I said, let me go to MCAC's website. Let me look at the letter that they sent to me. So if I want to take stock, this is where I'm going to get information. I looked at the letter and the first thing that I saw had to do with the motto of MCAC. And the motto of MCAG is integrity, excellent services, and partnership. Then I started reflecting that with the schools that I've been to all this while, what, what has been our motto? One of them, my primary school, Datus, it says knowledge is power. So there's an input and there's an output. You get knowledge, you get power. Another school says perseverance conquers all. You persevere an input, you conquer an output. Then I asked myself, 10 years, MCAG, I want to take stock. Our motto is integrity, excellent services, partnership. Then I say, what are the outputs? What are the indicators for measuring outputs? So some of the thoughts that came to mind is that one output is that if I have integrity, I'm going to improve the potential performance of all members. Another output that came to mind is that if I have integrity, and as was said earlier on, I'm going to contribute to financial development. Then a deeper question that comes in there is, if I want to contribute to financial development, which dimension of financial development am I contributing to? Is it about the stability of the sector? Then I say, step back. If it's about the stability of the sector, and as Ebenezer said earlier on, 31 of our members have had challenges with BOG. Are we achieving that? 10 years down the line, this is what we have to look at. Another thing that came to mind, which I'm very passionate about when it comes to the financial sector is the issue of financial intermediation. A lot of us see financial intermediation as simply getting money from those who have excess and giving money to those who don't have. And again, I want to emphasize, reiterate the point that was made earlier on. MCAD is not deposit taking. So you don't take deposits. So you are not going to look for those with excesses, but you're going to provide money for those who need it. But that is not financial intermediation. Financial intermediation really has to do with resource allocation. 
As a financial provider, you think through the landscape of an economy and you ask yourself which of the sectors would drive the Ghanaian economy. Then you move money from the sectors that will less drive the economy to the sectors that are going to drive the economy. That is financial intermediation. So if you are providing excellent services, are your services geared towards resource allocation? Second reflection on the, on the motto which has to do with integrity, excellent services, and partnership. The third thing that I looked at in terms of an indicator is startup and growth of businesses. Is that the kind of demonstration that we want to do about our services? If you are talking about integrity, we should begin to think about the number of cocoa sellers that we've upscaled. And it's going to be one of the issues that I'm going to talk about. You start at a cocoa seller, the, to what extent do we ensure that your business expands? To three branches, four branches, and if, you, if it's your aim not to stay as a cocoa seller, what do you eventually want to be? And as MCAG member, what is my role in that? Then the fourth area has to do with poverty reduction. At that point, I said, don't move further. Don't add any indicators to it. Let's look at what we have as objectives and what, let's see what we have as areas of strategic focus. So again, I delve deeper into the website and I came up with four objectives and eight areas of strategic focus. So the first thought that came to mind is, what is the level of alignment between the objectives, areas of strategic focus, and the motto of MCAC? Then we have a set of areas of strategic focus and objectives. Clearly, the indicators that I came up with as outcome indicators or possibly in, in, impact in the indicators were not fully measured out of the areas of strategic focus. One area that was completely missing, if you go through it, is the fact that all eight areas of strategic focus plus the objectives do not touch on a customer-centric approach. All the issues that we see in there are one-sided in terms of the institution approach. It is possible it's right, and it is assumed, it is inherent in the fact that once you make the institutions strong, performing well, it will naturally translate. But moving into the next 10 years, I think we need to look at this carefully. Because from a development economics point of view, the argument of things trickling down, we've moved away from it. The other issue that came up had to do with the level of transparency in terms of operations and performance. Financial services, financial intermediation thrives on trust. So as a financial institution, if you are putting information out there, or as an association of financial institutions, if you are putting information out there, you would hardly have to miss the issue of transparency. Because that is the basis by which we talk about financial knowledge. To a very large extent, when we talk about financial literacy, we only think about it from the perspective of financial education, based on campaigns that we mount. But we don't think about it from the perspective of the extent to which we make full and complete information available to beneficiaries, to empower them to make the necessary decision. So transparency was completely missing, and I asked myself, should we reflect on this moving into the next 10 years? The third issue that came up, are they really delivering microcredit services? This problem would be averted if on the website of MCAC, you clearly publicize the information that we need. So that if I'm somebody who needs 50 Ghana CDs, and I go there and I see that all the institutions are offering 50,000 Ghana CDs and above, I know that MCAG is not a place to go. So we need to reflect back, and for those of us who are following issues in the industry, take some time and look at the Microfinance Barometer 2019, which looks at different country experiences, where they clearly indicate what microcredit is in terms of amount. So now, as a general, as general public, we are oblivious of the amount that microcredit institutions are putting out there. And this is where MCAG would have to come in. You don't have to do it at the individual institution level. You anonymize the data if you want to do it that way. Or, in the worst case, you do it at the aggregated level. The fourth issue that came to mind confirmed the argument that it is really not customer-centric. 
So we needed to reflect on it more. So having looked at the motto, the objectives, and the strategic focus, I said to myself that all the blame should not be pushed to the operations of MCAD. We need to look at what is happening in the global context. So that is what pushed me to my second area. Then I looked into the global context and I realized that whatever challenges that we are having in Ghana is not a peculiar situation. Countries like India, even Bangladesh, have had their own share of what is happening in the microfinance sector. This is principally because of maybe our inability to understand the sector from both ends, the beneficiary side and the supply side. So in that data, it clearly tells us that in terms of outreach, there has been a reduction from 211 million in 2013 customers to about 113 in 2017. There's still high cost of operations, so it's happening at a global level as well. Then for my interest, which has to do with impact analysis, both from the financial side and the poverty side, the evidence continue to be mixed. So we need to reflect on what microfinance can do and what microfinance cannot do. Although we continue to push microfinance for the fact that it's reflected in the SDGs, we should know that it's just a part of the cake. And as stakeholders, we need to go and look for the other part of the cake to ensure that we can tap into the right synergy. Census of microfinance institutions was done around 2014. And that data pointed to the fact that as a country, we had in excess of 3,000 micro institutions parading as microfinance institutions. It was at that point that I said to myself, what is MCAG? Because I was not too sure how MCAG varied from MLAG. In the 2015 exercise, we knew of seven institutions, apex institutions. Then again, I said, no, let me go back to the MCAG website and see whether it's MLAG or it's MCAG. Then in that website, you are not too clear whether it's MCAG or MLAG. Because the profile on the website has information on MLAG. But I'm here to see where it transitioned. So now, as a layperson, I was pushed to make a call to other people in the industry. Then they educated me that at some point, given the perceptions and so on about money lenders, Bank of Ghana accepted the request to change its mandate from MLAG to MCAG. Then I said, let's go back and look at what the perceptions were as far as microfinance institutions were concerned. And during my research around 2008, 2009, one of the major issues had to do with usury interest rate, high interest rate. And once you talk about that, it's MLAG that comes up. And for those of you who are privy to the book, Economics of Microfinance, there was a chapter that was written by our own good friend, Dr. David Ander and William Steele, who did some analysis on differential microfinance rates in Ghana. And in that book, they point to interest rate of MLAG in excess of 100%, whereas the average for the other microfinance institutions ranged around 30, 40%. So the immediate question that came to mind after the transition of name from MLAG to MCAG whether it also translated in terms of interest rates. Unfortunately, I was unable to respond to that. So within country, we are having challenges with data and evidence on impact analysis is equally mixed. As MCAG, it is your responsibility to develop a framework for institutional <coughs> maturation. If you are an apex institution, you have over 600 members, and you don't have a framework which says that 30 of them, assuming you have four categories within MCAG, 30 of them hypothetically would move into tier two in the next three years, will move again into tier four in the next five years, and will move into tier five, whatever number of categories. Then as MCAG, you need to review your operations because your output to the organization would have to be felt. So institutional maturation is critical. The second issue that I thought is worth sharing with you, as I said earlier on, is development of a framework for client upscaling. This is not the responsibility of MCAG, this is the responsibility of members. MCAG has the responsibility 
of developing a framework for institutional maturation. And as institutions, you have the responsibility of developing your own framework as credit officers to upskill clients. Then the third issue has to do with digitized system. So I touch on one for MCAG, I touch on the other microcredit institutions. There is the need to think about strategies by which we can reduce the operational cost for microcredit institutions. And one way you may want to think about, which you cannot shy away from, is adopting a centralized digitized system to handle some of the activities which are manually done. As a country, we are not harnessing the technology era that we are in now. This calls for reflection at the national level, and obviously for MCAG, it's a call for you to think about a centralized digitized system which would, in the long run, it has a heavy initial cost outlay, but in the long run, take off the considerable high cost of operations. The second one for microcredit institutions, product diversification. We are so restricted in the space of credit and we do not think about synergies with the other financial products. We need to go back and reflect on this. We have some customers that need a variety of services. It's not all the customers that would come to you with credit and would want to stay with you for forever with credit. There is an opportunity, there is your literature, which suggests that while you do not take deposits, there are other services that you can. And obviously you need Bank of Ghana to sanction that. But a huge potential in driving people out of poverty is not in the single financial service that you provide. It's the scope of the financial services and more importantly, the uniqueness that each beneficiary would attach to the mix of financial products. And that is the responsibility of microcredit institutions and not MCAR. An appreciation of the extent of exclusion and the issue of discouraged beneficiaries. As a country, we've not reflected on it more. We put out figures ranging between 35% to 50%, depending on the measure of financial inclusion, and we say, let's put in efforts to do that. What we fail to do is to step back and look at the depth of exclusion and why the person is not excluded. There are two sides of to it. One person, is, one person might be excluded because the person simply doesn't want to be with a microfinance, microcredit institution. Another side is that because of what is happening in the industry, there's institutional exclusion. And now what we are experiencing as a country is a national exclusion. People feel that there's some stigma associated with being identified as a client of a microfinance institution. If MCAG microcredit institutions, you don't tackle this issue head on, all of us in the industry would have challenges. For those of us who are trainers, we are not getting trainees. For those of you who rely on a clientele base, they are thinking about whether to work with you or otherwise. So more or less now, you are working with people who are loyal to a very large extent. We we'll better appreciate how to deal with this if we get into the extent of exclusion and the sources of exclusion. So my first concluding statement is that, in my own opinion, the current happenings in the microfinance sector in Ghana, both the challenges and the proposed interventions suggest that we are losing the poverty orientation of microfinance. The second issue is that there is evidence from the impact analysis that microfinance cannot be a standalone intervention. If we want to change our fortunes as far as development is concerned, we need to think about the synergies that microfinance needs, identify those synergies, and see how we can combine them to hasten and deepen the fight against poverty. The third concluding statement brings us hope, and I mentioned that earlier on. The SDGs, which focuses on eliminating poverty in all its forms and everywhere. For the sake of emphasis, I repeat that. Eliminating poverty in all its forms, not only financial forms, and everywhere, not only Greater Accra and Ashanti region, identifies microfinance as a strategy that brings us hope. Goodwill for microfinance is still there, 
our ability to thrive on that goodwill to sustain all of us in the industry, including my own colleague who is heading offset at Bank of Ghana, is to see how we can rationalize this moving forward. MCAG, specific recommendations. You should reassess the expectations and scope from your motto, your objectives, and your areas of strategic focus. I've emphasized on it, and my recommendation is that let's go back, reflect on it more. At the minimum, let's indicate the outcome indicators. And in 10 years from today, if we come to speak, we'll use the indicators as basis to say that this is how far we've achieved it, this is how far we're not able to achieve it, and identify strategies moving forward on how to do things better. The fourth issue has to do with the need to publicize data. And as I talked about, with that data, we have no business thinking about how we can improve on the things that we do. My colleague from Bank of Ghana, the sanitizing exercise would only be half-baked if we continue the way we are doing it. Prudential is not only the way to go as far as the industry is concerned. The industry has to think about both prudential and non-prudential components. The only way for Bank of Ghana to do that is to continue collaborating with institutions that have the mandate to look at the non-prudential aspects. That is the only way by which we can sanitize the sector. My last recommendation has a governmental twist. So we need to look at it carefully, reflect on it, and see how we can utilize it to improve on what we need in the sector. The first one of the two has to do with we, as stakeholders in microfinance, having confidence in what government is doing as far as sanitizing the sector is concerned. One way to sanitize the sector for us stakeholders to have confidence in what the government is doing is to redesignate the entire concept of Maslow. The concept of Maslow sends a certain mindset in the minds of us as stakeholders, especially when its areas of, op of operations are not too clear. Retail financing, we are not too sure. Development aid, we are not too sure. Instead of the way Maslow is running now, what we should do at the governmental level is the setting up of credit reference bureaus. And I must commend MCAC, one of their eight strategic areas, they talked about credit referencing bureau. We talked about this in 2004 when we started engaging with the sector. 15 years down the line, we've still not held on to this. So this argument about we are not a deposit taking institution, we will not go around it. As far back as 2004, we identified institutions that are not deposit taking. Instead, what they were doing was to get their customers to be with institutions that are deposit taking with an umbrella name in their institutions as, as non-deposit taking and indirectly taking deposits. The only way to deal with this problem is to create a database that we can clearly reference who is doing what and who is taking what. For the sake of emphasis, M Maslow would have to be refaced as a country and in place of Maslow, the investment that goes there, we can use it for credit referencing. Thank you very much. This year, your Macaba beam or Sikasem Honey Dear Dumay Dear So. Dear Obeyful Cabna and Nim, a can or Porto Cassem and Abro for Cassemuno, do a person change in our answer. A year data, a chair, Nipacudu duo, and your mother duo, our moody and Juma, a far microfinance sector honor, a war form, indeed a doom rare, or so one Cassasu di Nomegua Quemu. Na it me poor woman, Emma woman ya data, a bit me a poor, Nasi busy moon, uh, the Paco du Dua, or Mono Mutins, I was sure, the Padu Dua, or my poor woman, and no, no, you bit me. The Tosu be a mono, or Sasu can be be a faster, you may do a mudino, a moment would now true do transparency. Oh, you may do a mudino. In the quasso, my dear Catasumu, so an answer more Catano may be so, a son say, or more per se. Uh, Omo bobo si ya nintendo, no ma katanyo maso. Osansu etu omo fonsu se, 
eh eh se ka se mon ndie a o modi mano eni kwa se ko jina fa ko se o mon ko ade no o mo chirem nemu o so o mo ba fo e ma o mo o mo di nsa o so no so e ti de o mo ye na se ye na o mo bibia mu na o paint se ni bakro no ba so no be di nsa o so a oni chi se ye fa o nyina de timi aboa abo ba ko ne si jina e pa e o jume di o pe so no mu di no de sa to so bi mu so no o tu o mo fo se o mo jume di o mo di no o so o du me o so o mo se sem o mo di akadie akadie bi ru ru mu a e be boa na ma jume di o mo di no e timi akon ni me di puntu o eni su sa so pa abre o ma gana eni di pe nyina o ka kire o mo so se e wo se o mo dwume di o mo ya na kusi abo na o mo bo no e ma ni ku jina se obi a o wo adwuma o ya na obi a wo adwu o ye adwuma ko a na mum e wo se o mo so so o mo she adwuma se no o mo fa product bi mra e betimi abo a se ko fo ko ni nyina na o mo so etimi enye sika na dwetre e wo mo dwume di a o mo yi mu de to so a o no so di tu o mo fo e de be mi ye ne se ene eni o ma ko ni bi wi ase sesa enti e wo se o mo de abe fo kwan en su jume dia o mudi di no edi bi wuram se de be ya edwadi fo mu o mudi nsa wo so ni nyina no enti bitimi afa kwa bi so e be ma o ma hoto en fa won ni be bi owo bi ya no enam se ona ma ba fo kwa so nti no o betimi age busia asa tua ne busia e wo ni tete fo so ana bo ba mo ni so ana kwa ni asa bebre se de be ya oni ba kro no ho en chire no ampo wo majuma wo mu yeni mu eni kwa se ni nyina ko jina fa ko se abre bia no e wo so di pakro ni ba wo mu chen ana se ni pakro no wo mu hia no e ma ne chocho na no asem ni mu mo mu fa ba fu kwa so a e betimi aboa ama wo jume di wo mu ye no akone nim na aboa ama financial inclusion ya ye pe e wo ma mu no etimi akone nim ama ankra ankra bia wo du fi a e wo so timi e ye djuma na wo di sika ko to sika kra bia timi sa ye sika kra sika se mu nim no o munyi na anzo so enya chefa e wo sika sem ho enti di o kan ye no e na mabon ni tofa be da wase se ne wanya adaje na wahwe me preta tete amuzu eni min hia na wotwe se ne e wo dumadie so na yensua no ma bebere emfa sika sem